Hey folks, Sam here at NA Studios. Thanks so much for checking the video out. I want to take a look at asymmetrical waveforms here, which are something that can really affect dynamics processing. So if you're applying any kind of compression, any kind of limiting, anything that looks for a peak in some audio, then this is going to have a great effect on your audio because a compressor or a limiter will just look for a peak level. It doesn't necessarily matter if that's in the positive or the negative. It's just looking for a peak. And if your audio is more weighted towards the positive or the negative, one side or the other, it's going to clamp down unduly and you're going to get more processed tracks where you don't really need it. So this is kind of a, a best practice thing where if you're seeing that something is hanging off the center line more than it is above the top or vice versa, then this is really something that's going to help you get less processing, but overall better loudness and better dynamic control over your track. So if you're a user of RX or of Logic Pro or any kind of voiceover, but then also drums and full band recordings, then check out the member section of my YouTube channel that I've just launched where you can get early access to videos, you can get all my drum samples, you can get loads and loads of great content there that is only available to you as a member. I'd love to have you there. So I've got a voiceover here and it's just a, a standard voiceover. There's nothing crazy about it. Um, if I take it so we're just in the waveform view, then check out, well, there's a few instances of it, but this one is the main one just here. So if I zoom in on this slightly, we'll see that the positive waveform, if we were to draw a ruler line across there, is somewhere around between five and six or minus five and minus six dB. But the negative waveform is at around minus two and a half, somewhere between minus three and minus two. So if we set a compressor, at minus four, for example, it's going to compress because it's seeing a peak, but it's only seeing the peak in the negative side of the waveform. So it doesn't actually have to be there. We can change it and we can make it so that it's not going to compress heavily at that point, because it may be that this is just an anomaly. It may be that this peak is not representative of the rest of the audio and it's going to clamp down heavier on this section where you have your threshold set for, you know, for the right place for the rest of the audio. So anything that protrudes too much is kind of bad news when we're compressing stuff. So super simple way of doing this is just to go over to phase. I'm just going to bring this up and at the moment I've got adaptive phase rotation set, but let's just, just talk about exactly what this does. So it's going to rotate the phase. So essentially if you think of your middle line, your kind of zero line as being the, the pivot point, then it's going to say, well, let's give a little bit more, let's twist it a little bit more to the positive side or twist it a little bit more to the negative side. And this, this module can actually suggest where it thinks is going to make it most even. So if we're looking at it at the moment, as we said, it's around between minus five and minus six on the top and between minus two and minus three on the bottom. Let's suggest and let's just go render and just watch this part of the waveform come up. Did you see that? Let's just undo that and then redo it. You can see how it's just kind of flipping round. And now we have somewhere between minus four and minus five on the top and we have somewhere between minus four and minus five on the bottom. So it's evened out those two sides. It's evened out the positive and the negative. Now, if we have our threshold set to around minus four, then it's probably not going to bother with this too much. Whereas before it would have clamped down on the, the top two couple of dB there. So in terms of sound, does it sound any different? Well, let's check it out. If I just undo that for a moment, so I get rid of the phase, let's take a listen to just this section and we'll just see exactly what it sounds like with no processing on at all. So this is not with the phase there. It's just the way they are. All voices are different. Okay. And then let's bring the phase back in using my history. And then let's listen to the same thing again. It's just the way they are. All voices are different. It's just the way they are. All voices are different. It's just the way they are. All voices are different. No real difference there in tone, in timbre. It's just going to affect the processing later on in the chain. So in terms of musical elements, I've got a drum kit here, which has this same issue on the snare drum. And when we're processing snare drums or drums in general, we tend to be using compression. And if we have a, 
uh, a compressor set at a certain threshold. It's the same problem as we had with the voice. It's going to kick in too early, but think of this on a larger scale. If you have mismatched waveforms all across a multi-track project, then they're going to build up. And if they all have an issue in the positive, where they're too more weighted towards the positive, then before you know it, you're going to get to your master bus processing and you're going to apply a compressor or a limiter. It's going to be kicking in far earlier than it really should be. So let's see this in practice. So here I've got a snare track and I've got a slightly mismatched waveform. So if we take a look at these sections here, for example, we can see that it's massively higher on the positive side than it is on the negative side. And this is going to cause an issue when we come to that compression. So what I've done is I've created two versions of this, one which has got the phase kind of rotation applied and one which is just completely clean. And I've brought them into my multi-track door. So the top one here is the clean one. And then the bottom one here is the, the phase rotated one. So snare 10 and then snare phase. This is the clean one. This is the snare rotated. So if we take a look at the two different loudness meters or the level meters, then we can see that this one I've got hold of now is the snare with the phase applied. And this is the original one. So we're going to see a far higher peak on the original one than we are on the phase one. You can see it, it's still there from when I just tested it a moment ago. Um, but let's just see it in real time. So we've got almost 3 dB difference there, which is very significant when we come to using compression. And if we have that across a number of tracks, that is really going to be an issue. If we add together the discrepancy of 3 dB each time, if it's all on one group of instruments for the drums, for example, then our compressor is really going to be working a lot harder when it doesn't need to. So we can take a listen to these in, in order and you can hear that there's no no difference between them, it's just that the waveforms were misaligned. No discernible difference between them, just that the waveforms were recorded in a way that it just happens sometimes. It just is one of those things that you have to be aware of, but with RX, we can just apply that phase rotation and get it back to a place where it's not going to be overly processed at the next stage. So I hope that's been useful for you, whether you're taking a look at it from a vocal point of view, kind of voiceover stuff, or from a musical point of view. This is really going to affect things when you're thinking about compression, dynamics processing, but even if you've got a distorted guitar, if you've got a mismatched waveform going into an amp simulator, then it's going to break up far sooner on the positive side of the waveform if it's misaligned with the negative or vice versa. So something to be aware of, something that is an easy fix if you know how to do it, and now you do. I'll see you again soon. Take care.